Hey there drone fans, Rick here again from Drone Valley. So today's clip is going to focus on the brand new Phantom 4 Pro that was announced by DJI about a week ago. I've had a lot of questions from you guys about what's this new drone all about, how does it compare to the Phantom 4, how does it compare to the Mavic, should I cancel my Mavic order and order one of these new Phantom uh, 4 Pros. So I can't possibly answer all those questions in one clip or I'll be here for an afternoon. So what I promise you I'll do is I'll follow up with a bunch of other clips that do comparisons side by side with some of those other quads that are out there to give you a feel for maybe why one is better or different than the other one. Today's clip I want to focus on really the nuts and bolts of what this Phantom 4 Pro represents for the market space. Because honestly, when you hear a product come out that has the word Pro on the end of it or XL on the end of it, it usually means they've taken the product they've been selling you for the last six months, tweaked some little aspect of it, and can charge more for it, right? And it's a minor change at best because it's in the same family of products. That's not the case with this Phantom 4 Pro. It's like they took the Phantom 4 and engineered a lot of the different systems that are in there to the next level. So they've changed almost everything inside that particular copter from a communications perspective, from the camera perspective, the software is different, um, the, the way it communicates and connects to the controller is different. So they've really upgraded almost everything there is to be upgraded in that drone. And I'll go through that in some specifics in a minute. But to keep this clip kind of short, I'm going to break it into four parts. I'm going to talk about the quad, I'll talk about the camera, then I'll talk about the controller. And I'll talk about the software. Now, some of the changes are minor. Some of them are really major changes, but all of them are improvements. And whenever I look at a new product, this is kind of how I approach things, I think to myself, I already know what this one does. You've now released this one. Why should I care? What's different about it? Not what's cool about it, but what fundamentally changes my experience with that product that would make me want to spend my hard-earned cash on this next generation of product. This, this product, this Phantom 4 Pro, has got those changes in spades. And again, I know I rave about their products an awful lot. I only do that because the geniuses that are working in the labs down there at DJI are, I must work 24 by seven. There must be a lot of energy drink, drinks being passed around between those guys because the kind of changes they're making from an engineering perspective in the time frame they're making them is just astounding to me. So when I look at what this drone can do, it, it, it's amazing to me that they've got a combination of you know, flight coordination, um, the ability from an airframe to lift off the ground. They've got navigation abilities built into it. They've engineered the camera to be almost as good as a ground-based DSLR. Um, and on top of it, they've got video streaming at high rates and bit rates, and they've got encoding software. So what you've got is like seven products together that fly. I mean, and again, it just blows me away that we've come this far in such a short period of time. All right, so enough of me raving about it. Let me start with the, uh, the quad. So the quad itself looks a lot like the Phantom 4. If you put them on the table next to each other, you might have a hard time telling the difference from the outside of the quad. The blades are the same, the battery's fundamentally the same. You get a little longer flight time. I think it's 30 minutes now with the new battery. So you're getting three or four minutes of flight time. I love that because I'm, I never have enough time in the air. So four or five extra minutes for me is a good thing. So 30 minutes of flight time. Um, they improved the range of it too. So with the Mavic, they introduced this new technology called OcuSync, which gave it a lot further distance than the LightBridge technology did. On this new Phantom 4 Pro, they've introduced uh, an upgrade to the LightBridge technology called LightBridge HD. And I think the fundamental difference between LightBridge and LightBridge HD is they're now using both of the Wi-Fi frequencies, so both the 2.3 gigahertz and the 5.8 gigahertz band. You can select between the two. And what's nice about that is if you're in an area where you've got a lot of ISM traffic from Wi-Fi routers and microphones, microwave ovens or power lines, you can flip over to the 5.8 gigahertz and you can find a clean channel. So what you're going to get there is better communication with your drone um, in, in every type of circumstance. They've improved the distance to 4.3 miles. Now, for me, I don't know how, I'm an older guy, but I don't know how you're seeing a drone four and a half miles away from you. So I have really no interest in flying that far. But what I have an interest in is having rock solid communications with the drone when I'm flying in close, especially if I'm in a noisy environment. I want to make sure that my controller can control the drone and I can stream high quality video to my, you know, to my controller and see it and record it. So the fact that they've now made that range so much further, I'm feeling pretty confident that I can fly in close and not have problems with it losing connections. Um, they've also improved the uh, crash avoidance, which is something that everybody was asking me about is, you know, I'm worried about this thing crashing into a tree or a building. Um, the crash avoidance was great in the P4. It had sensors in the front, stereo op uh, op optic sensors in the front that it could sense something and would stop. The Mavic does the same thing. They've really taken it to another level now with this Phantom 4 Pro. In this product, they've got a technology called flight autonomy, and I've got a, a slide up here about it. I didn't spell that wrong. That's actually probably a trademark term from them. But what that means is they've got 
Visual positioning sensors out the front like they did in the Phantom 4. They have another set of stereo sensors out the back. They've got two stereo sensors facing down. They're using the main camera and they've now got brand new infrared sensors off the sides. Now what's different about the infrared sensors, oh, I forgot the, super, the ultrasonic sensors on the bottom as well. What's different around the infrared sensors is they've got a better distance and they're also really, really good at drawing three-dimensional maps of things on the side. So they can sense the closest point of some object next to the drone better than the ultrasonics can. So it's a much more accurate system. It'd be cool if each of those operated independently, but what they've done is built a, a dedicated core, I guess, that actually looks at all those sensors together and draws a map from, from an intellectual perspective, I guess digitally, draws a map inside that, that it knows where it's flying. So it can detect objects all around it and know that it's not going to bump into it. So I think you'd be hard pressed to crash this thing. Now don't prove me wrong on that because when I get it, I'll take it out and try and crash it myself. But I think this, this crash avoidance system in it is so sophisticated that you'd have to really go some to try to crash the thing. And I think a lot of you are worried that if you're going to spend 1500 bucks on a drone, that it's as safe as possible, which is pretty cool. And this product has that built in. All right, the next thing I want to talk about is the camera. This camera is astoundingly good. So they've taken the camera and they've upgraded it to a full one inch sensor inside there that can do 20 megapixel, uh, 20 megapixel sensor, which is amazing, which means it can do 4K video at both 30 frames per second and 60 frames per second. It also records in H.264 and H.265. So it's a much bigger, richer picture. There's a lot more information in the H.265. Uh, if you record in that, you know what I'm talking about. You have a lot more control over how the cinematic uh, appeal of that, that footage looks when you, when you render it down. Um, they've also changed the camera. They're the first company, I think, that has a camera that flies that has a mechanical shutter. Up till now, they've had digital shutters, which work great. The place that digital shutters break down is when you're either filming something that's moving really fast or the drone is moving really fast and you're trying to get you know, burst shots of something. You may get a bending effect because of the digital shutter. Now having a mechanical shutter eliminates all those issues for you, so that's pretty cool. Then inside the drone, they've actually got dedicated and improved image processing software inside the core, so they're actually a smarter way of processing that video that's coming in to actually take care of uh, you know, making sure you get the best possible quality and you store all the information you need to get a perfect picture out of it. The last thing I'll talk about is the lens. So they've got a seven layer lens built in there. The optics inside this thing, again, rival some of the DSLRs that you use you know, in your everyday life. So imagine having that quality of picture up in the air. And when people ask me, should I go for the Phantom 4 Pro? If you're looking for the absolute best picture quality in the air at this point, at that price point, that Phantom 4 Pro is better than the Mavic by a long shot and better than the P4 as well. So if you're all about the image quality, Phantom 4 Pro should be a no brainer for you. All right, the next thing I'll talk about is the controller. Now the controller, you can get it one of two flavors. You can get it as the standard controller, which looks just like that Phantom 4 controller that's out today, or you can get the plus version. Now the plus version has a 5.5 inch 1080p uh, display built right into it. It's like a miniature tablet that's built in. It swings up and it's ready to go. Now there's pros and cons there, right? The con is that I'm stuck with a 5.5 inch screen, but they also give you a USB out, so I guess you could use the tablet off, off the uh, controller. The pros to it though is that it's an integrated display, which means the software that runs the display and the software that runs the controller are tightly integrated. So when they upgrade the DJI Go app, DJI Go app, they can actually upgrade, you know, the mechanics of what that display can do and how it integrates with the other software and stuff. So it's a tighter integration. It's sort of a walled garden of development that they've got a lot more control over. It also means you don't have to go fumbling around with cables and your phone. Oh, I forgot my cable. The phone doesn't work. I've upgraded the software. Now it doesn't work. Th this is an integrated system. So I do like it from that perspective. The other thing that's really cool is they've got an incredibly bright display. It's a, it's a thousand uh, CD per meter squared, which is, is twice or three times what most of the tablets that are out there have today. So if you look at the old iPad 2, I think that was 400 and change. So a thousand is bright as can be. So they're claiming, and I haven't played with it yet, but I will, that you can look at this in bright sunlight and see everything. So that's a huge deal for me because everything I have today that I connect up to my controller, I've got to find a shady place under a tree to use it, or I've got to put a hood on it, which means I've got a bunch of other stuff around me. So having a display that's that bright, that's integrated, uh, it, it seems to me to be a good advantage uh, for the controller. And people say, well, gee, it's 300 bucks more to buy that controller with the display in. But what is a good tablet question, right? If you're going to buy this copter, you're going to find you need a fast tablet to, to use it. You're going to have to go out and buy a tablet. So you drop 400 bucks in an iPad mini four, you've still got to deal with the cables and all the rest of that stuff. You have to charge it. So this is all integrated. It's a nice, clean way to go. So I kind of like that an awful lot. Um, the last thing I'll talk about is the software, which is really I think the magic of any drone, when I look at what DJI has done with software and I compare it to other products like Unique and Carmen, some of the other brands that are out there, 
I want automation built into the software. I want to have things like tap the fly and active track and you know they've got a bunch of new features and I'll talk about those in a second but but the software is really the brains of the operation because as you guys know flying a quad is complicated it's hard to put it where you need it and then if you're moving that quad and trying to get that perfect shot when you're panning and rotating there, there's a lot going on there so it's really difficult to sort of manage the sticks and look at the display and get the exact shot you want so any kind of automation I can add to a controller through software just makes my life a whole lot easier so there's basically five modes I want to talk about the first one is the tap mode so the tap mode allows you to just like you'd expect look at the screen tap at a spot and the drone will fly to that spot now in advanced and, and they've added some things like you can tap forward tap backwards or tap free and I'll get into the differences between those but again they've expanded at the options inside that tap option. Um, the second one I want to talk about, which is a new feature for them, is called draw, where you can actually on the screen draw with your finger a path that you want the drone to follow. And you hit go and the drone actually follows that path. So that's really cool because if you're looking at a map, you're looking down at what you're flying to, you can actually draw out exactly the waypoints you want that drone to hit and it'll hit those waypoints. So it's, it's an advanced feature that I think really is, is a long time coming. The auto track is another one that I love. Auto track has been great, but I've had some complaints and I've complained to this channel about it where maybe it doesn't recognize me if I go behind a tree and pop out or if I turn sometimes it would lose me. So they've improved the active track algorithm, which is what is behind the scenes from the brain perspective looking at you, and it can now recognize you in different positions, so it's better that way. It can also recognize different things, so it's got different algorithms for like a person, a bike, a dog, other things that are out there, and they keep adding to that Cadillac. So over time, I don't think you'll be able to avoid the active track. I think once you set it and it locks on you, good luck trying to get out of it. That drone's going to follow you all around the field. Um, so active track is good. Um, they have, and again, in the active track, I'm looking at a screen here, there's, there's trace, profile, and spotlight. And, and those three are different in the way that they keep track of you. And I'll go through these in detail in another clip, but just suffice it to say that the active track is smarter and there's more options for you to sort of follow the person or follow the object that you're looking to follow. Um, another one I want to talk about was the gesture mode, which is something that the Mavic had. Now gesture mode is kind of a selfie mode. I don't use it much. I played with it a little bit on the Mavic, but I may use it more now. But it allows you to put up the drone, have it point at you, and then through gestures with no controller at all, sort of put your arms up and have it recognize you and then take a picture of you, which is kind of cool. So if you're out there and you want to get into that perfect selfie and you don't want to have a controller and then throw it out of the way when the picture's taken, gesture mode is good to go. The other big thing they've improved on is the return to home function. So return to home for me has always worked really, really well, but with this new one, it's so smart that when I send it out on a course, it's going to remember that course. So if I get out there and I have an emergency where it loses connection or the battery's getting low and it's got to do an emergency return to home, it's going to try its best to fly that course back that it flew out because it knows it's a safe course. It actually made it out there and didn't crash in anything, so it knows coming back it can fly the same course and make it back safely. I like that an awful lot. It's also smart enough that if it gets stuck halfway back because it ran into, didn't run into, but it came up against an obstacle that it couldn't go over or didn't know what to do with, it actually looks down now and if it's over water it won't land. It'll hover there. So it'll, it'll look for a safe place to land and land. So there's just all kinds of really smart things built into this drone to kind of protect you as a pilot from situations that could cause damage to the drone or heaven forbid cause damage to people around the drone. So what I love about this company, and I know I'm raving about him again, and I sound like a fanboy because I really am becoming a fanboy, is that they think through the stuff that we care about as pilots. They fly the drones. They understand that things like active track have to have the ability to track in front of me, track from the side, track from behind, maybe, maybe in free mode, allow me to swing the camera around as the drone's doing the flying. To think that stuff up and then to build the software that actually enables it and put it in front of you as a, as a product you can use, I think is just the best, the best thing you can do. So I like this drone an awful lot. I know it's more expensive than Phantom 4, but if the stuff I've talked about doesn't convince you that it's well worth that upgrade in money, um, buy the Phantom 4. It's a great drone. If you don't like the Phantom 4, the Mavic's a phenomenal drone. And again, the big difference for me between the Phantom products and the Mavic are the portability. I've talked before about how the Mavic folds up, goes in my bag, and I can take it anywhere. The Phantom 4 is an upgrade because it's got a little more, the Phantom 4 Pro's got a ton of upgrades over what the Mavic can do. So there's a lot of trade-offs back and forth, but honestly, I don't think you can go wrong buying any of these drones. And the thing I always caution you guys about is, and I'm, I'm guilty of this as well, it's sort of this paralysis of analysis. When new products come out, I'll labor over, should I get it? I don't know, is it better than this one? Is it better than that one? And months go by. And I realize as I get older, the months that go by where I'm making that decision, um, I don't get to play with the toy, right? So if, if I'm thinking I want to buy a drone, pick a drone. Pick one of the drones I talk about. Buy the drone and fly the drone. If you don't like it, you can always resell the drone to somebody else later on and upgrade to some, some better drone if you want when that one comes out in the spring. But right now, the Phantom 4, the Mavic, and especially this new Phantom 4 Pro from a prosumer perspective, 
are easily the best drones on the planet. There's nothing that comes close to them. So between those three, make a decision and buy one of those drones. Anyway, that's all I had for today. So again, if you guys had questions that I missed, and I'm sure I missed a ton of them, drop them in the comments below and I'll get back to you. I really appreciate the subscriber base growing. I've been watching the numbers tick up. It seems like a lot of people are discovering the channel and enjoying the clips we're doing. So as I always say, if you're having a good time watching these, we'll continue to make them. So I'm really having fun doing them. Anyway, thanks an awful lot for watching and uh, happy droning.